Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Project Dream. In today's episode, we get to figure out how we're going to lock a limited slip differential without welding it. Stay tuned. Plenty of metal bits in there. Look at that. It's all metal, metal shavings and whatnot. They're super fine, which is a good thing, but still just a lot. Hell. It went from a 12 to an 11 mil. All right, so now we've got the cast iron section uh, apart from this cast iron. I believe this is cast iron, but those are gonna get uh, bushings put in. If you want to check out that video, I'll have it. Which corner is it? It'll be in that corner over there. So be sure to check out that video too if you want to know how to fully install uh, metal bushings. As of this though, now that we're at this point. Now the GTU was supposed to have a open dip, and what that means is basically um, there was just four spider gears, what you call them, that go around here, and we would just take a piece of metal, slap it on there, and weld it. So in this situation, this was probably swapped for a limited slip differential, and so basically what that means is when these two—I don't want to pop these in on accident. When these two are in here like that, they can move freely this way, either way at low speeds, but as the as this system speeds up, there are discs in there. And those discs will eventually will start to expand and they'll grind up against each other and thus not allowing these to swivel in their own dependent way, and this more becomes a locked system. The only problem with that is sometimes uh, when you do like a handbrake pull and then go to a clutch kick to get the rear wheel spinning, and in that process of stop, go, stop, go, these can, uh, I'm assuming they can get really hot, and they tend to not engage often. A system like this would be perfect and ideal for a stuff like autocross, um, drag racing maybe, just, you know, race days at the track, you know, so you get that maximum grip coming out of the corner, but that nice, predictable handle. 
Now in the drift car, we don't really want that um, slow engaging, if I want to say, going from stop, go, stop, go, because what happens is we might be right now to step to a wall, pull the handbrake, just get a tish closer, push the clutch, if it doesn't engage, and boom, into the wall we go. Now, I don't want to weld this, because of a few reasons, one being that this is a very rare limited slip differential, but I'd really like to keep this and possibly use that as a limited slip for maybe a different vehicle down the road, but we still need to get this locked for now. So we're going to go ahead, take these bolts off, and then we'll take a closer look at this limited slip system. All right, so I'm gonna try and explain this the best way I can of how this whole system works, right? Here we have our discs, right? So these are these are gonna be the clutch discs, basically. These are what make it a limited slip, is when these gears here, these silver ones, when they have friction up against each other, so you see how they all freely move, they're, I mean, they're all different pieces. When they get tight, this all becomes one locking piece. On this clutch piece here, we have these outside tabs, right? And then we've got a secondary disc, and these are only inside discs. So now we have this all together. You can see we've got those outer rings here, which are, we've got the outside set here, and then we have our inside that's in here. And what that'll do is because these planetary gears, right, they're locked. They're locked into this housing, right? Because in this housing, we've got the, the grooves that fit for this. So this system is locked. This does not move. But the gears, these two in here, these can still freely move. But as soon as it starts to speed up, the friction process happens. It all becomes locked. All of a sudden, this piece here and this piece here, all of a sudden, basically become one piece. So this here is locked. Same thing on the other side. So what we need to do is basically make a piece that's going to fit on top that has these inside grooves that'll fit in there but then on the outside have these and that will in turn lock these pieces it's all right so we got all our diff part Ooh. all right so we got all our diff parts here we've got the case top spider gears and then these are pieces made by sheet metal customs and bismarck these turned out really great actually for a really good and affordable price. I believe this is just normal, your normal steel. You would find, yeah. So the piece that these are gonna be replacing are these rings, if you guys remember these from earlier in the video. Um, you can see now that it's actually just this, it's just these in one big piece. And when we put these all together, it's actually just slightly, I mean, it literally looks the same exact size. <laughs> and it looks like we are gonna have to grind, we're gonna have to grind these edges on here just so that it's a bit more bevel. Yeah, cause it's kind of protruding out on the sides. This is just by the millimeters though. This All right, now for the insides. All right, so we got both of our pieces here. We got both of these all uh, trimmed up, so these both fit in in the gears. Close. Oh, 
I think that's as close as it's going to get, so we are going to have to trim some of this, unfortunately. Yep, that is unfortunate. Other side. All right, there we go. Our piece fits in. There's just a teensy, weensy bit of play. Uh, this moves slightly up, but what's happening is, is it's pushing this little uh, piece in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's pushing it this way, and you know it needs to be solid. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this and I'm going to weld to the back side of the grooves that we cut. So we cut the inside pieces. Now it's kind of got this hook design, and now we're going to weld on the back side. We're just going to add some weld just so that this stops playing. A little bit of weld there. Put that across this side. So, what we basically did is we just added a little bit of material on the back side. So we've trimmed, we've trimmed the front, right? We've trimmed the front here, and now we're adding onto this backside. Oh, my hand's getting hot. All right, and about, what, half hour later of just grinding and Getting this to fit just right should just Put your hands in the air. Woo, pop in just like that. Zero play at all. Zero movement, zero play. All right guys, this is so exciting. We are finally ready to put this dip back together for the final time in a really long time. Really hoping these don't break. I don't think they will. These are pretty dang sturdy. I almost feel like it's ready for some like ASMR now.
Yeah.